Okay, page 24, please. Um, completing the square. So, for motivation, I will give you an example of something that you would know how to do. So, for example, if I had a problem like this, you know, you can write that like so. Oops. Mm -hmm. And here this will give us um, x squared plus x plus x plus 1 plus 2. So that gives us x squared plus 2x plus 3. And you remember the name of this? This is a... No? Quadratic. Okay, so that's good. So the question... Oh, by the way, and uh, you were saying there as well... Uh, You come across this frequently, so the quick way to do it, it's the first one squared plus twice the first one by the second one plus the second one squared. It's just a quick way to do it. I'd, probably, I'd end up using that a lot because it comes up a lot. Okay. Um, x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. Yeah. Now, is he going to be late? <laughs> I guess so. Put the phone away. Okay. Even if it is Mo. Next time I'll take it. Okay, now, um, the question now is, Can we write AX squared, well, I'll just stick with X squared, X squared plus BX plus C. Can we always write it like this? Okay. So this is what we're thinking about. You saw at the start here, when I have something in this form and I open it, it becomes a quadratic. Okay. So the question is, can we take a quadratic, a x squared plus bx plus c, and write it back in this form? Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. Always possible? Come on, guys. Always possible? I think not yet. When, when b is not zero, possibly, I I think always possible. Always possible. Always possible. What, what if... Uh, Ah, oh, but then it's not quadratic anymore. If this it was zero here. Um, now, does anyone know the name of this form here? Um, this one's called the quadratic. You know that. Does anyone know the name of this form? Polar. No. Not no. polar. No. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. What? Square. Perfect square. Very good. Perfect square. 
So what we're going to look at today is how we can go from quadratic to perfect square. Joshua, weren't you late? Yeah, now be quiet, come on. Quadratic to perfect square. So is it possible? Yes, it's actually always possible. And it turns out to be quite useful, uh, quite useful form as well. Okay, so let's look at how to do that. So I'll take an example to show you the process. A. Yes? Oh, look at the energy. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to do something for you, Antonina. Okay? So, Antonina and me to Lorraine at 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. And then Lorraine will come and decide which book is in the Sure, but she'll be here either way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sit down anywhere, so. All right, we'll take this one as an example then. x squared plus 2x plus 8. So please watch the process carefully, okay? It's not too difficult, and it's pretty common in the exam. So what you do first, put down your bracket and an x, and then you take this number here, okay, and you half it. So half of that plus 2 is plus 1. Okay, that's the first thing. That's just the start it, okay? Um, it's always a square here. Okay. And then what we do is we take this number. And we, in our heads, we take that number, which is positive A, and we take away, we minus this number we just wrote squared. So that's just still 1. What, 1 squared is 1. Would be nothing. Which, would, which if, one? If it would be 2x squared, then... Oh, yeah, no, that's a separate problem we'll look at. Yeah, it's only if there's no... If there's 1 here, yeah. Uh, no, but you're right. If there was an A here, that's... Completely different. Well, not completely different, but something we'll different. Really it, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do that example. Yeah. So we have plus one here. Ah, uh, sorry, plus seven here, because that's seven. I'll do a few examples so you get the idea. So the next one. X squared plus sixteen x plus seventy one. Yeah. Yep, yeah, completing the square. Yep. Yeah. The name of the lesson, which you probably missed at the start, right? So here, we have this number, so it's x plus 8 squared. Then in our heads, we do 71 minus 71 minus this, uh, this number we just wrote down squared, so minus 64. So that's a 7 again, actually. So plus 7. Yep. Okay, I'll, you know, I'll do another example. Um, can I scroll down a bit? Yeah. So hang on, that was the first one. That's the second one. Okay, here's another example. x squared plus 10x plus 32. So what we do first is we take this number here and half it. So what's half of this number? 5. So we have x plus 5 squared. Okay. Hussein, did you see how I got the 5 there? Yeah. And then in my head, or on the side, I do 32 minus this number squared. What's 5 squared? 25. So I minus that 7. That's funny. It's been 7 the last three times. Yeah. Still the same, yeah, like if it was like 3.5 or something. Yeah. yeah, we're going to do examples with fractions and negatives and all of that, okay? But this, don't worry, this is just the basic idea. Um, can everybody try, just make sure you have the idea, can everybody just do 1D for me? That's 1ABC. I'd like everybody to try D for me, please. 
And it won't be seven again. Um, a good question if you get in the exam. You know, let's see, next one. The user asking before asking for a sketch, right? To come to the uh, usually, but not always. There's examples of questions where it's not always a sketch that this is useful for, but usually a sketch would follow. Um, okay, so the one I asked you to do, that would be x plus 4 squared. So we have 17 minus 16, so that's a positive 1, so plus 1. Now we can check that that's the answer. So if I check that this is the answer, this will be x squared plus 8x plus 16 plus 1, which is x squared plus 8x plus 17. So you can see it is the same. So it does work. Okay. So let's look at ones a little bit more difficult now that they have a negative in it and they have a fraction. And then, as you said, they have an A in the front. Okay. Can I scroll down? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's do one like this with a minus and a fraction. So this is, I've just done one A, B, C, D. This would be two uh, D, if you want, sorry. 2d. x squared minus 3x minus 23 over 4. Now you need your calculator for sure for this. So just like before we have the middle number but what's half the middle number? Yeah 1.5 or as a fraction 3 over 2 squared. Then what we do in our head again minus 23, oh, let me make a bit more space Minus 23 over 4. 17 Yeah. Minus this number squared. 9 over 4. Yeah, so that's minus 22 over 4, isn't it? No. No. Sorry, what did I say? I meant to say 32. Yeah. Minus 32 over 4. Oh, which is minus 8, isn't it? No. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. Minus, eight. minus eight. Uh, So that's that's the answer for that one. So you see, even with a minus and even with a fraction, still the same process. But we uh, actually no. I better give you make sure you can do that. So uh, I'll let you try one. Can you do for me now? Let's see. That was uh, that was two D. Yeah, maybe you could just try 2a for me now. So do 2a. Uh, but will it make a fraction? No, it won't. Okay, don't do 2a. I want one with a fraction. An odd number in the middle. Yeah, like 2f, actually. 2f. Try 2f, please. With calculator. You can use your calculator. 2f. Have we got it? Let it if you're going to be stupid, at least do it at the back of the room where I can't see you. Not right in front of me. Have some courtesy, please. Now, 2F. Um, okay. Did we get 2F done? Yeah. All right. So, 2F. X squared plus 5X plus 13 over 4, so that is x 
plus 5 over 2 squared and now it's 13 over 4 minus 25 over 4 minus 11 over 4 12 over 4 it's 3 minus 3 yeah I'm matching up at the back so far yep okay now let's do one that has an A in the front Okay, so for example, like uh, 3a actually, minus 3x squared minus 42x minus 143. Now, just so you know, I can see that 3 goes into this number, 3 goes into this number, uh, but 3 doesn't go into this number, so you can divide each of these by 3, but not this one. So this one, uh, you can't divide by 3. That's not too important. I'm just trying to show you which one will be a fraction in a moment. This one here will be a fraction in a moment. What I do is I just change this into the form I had previously. So what I do is I, um, well, maybe someone remembers the verb. When I take, well, did I give you this verb? When I take the minus 3 out, what's this called? Factorizing. Yeah, factorizing or factor out. So that's what I do first. I take that minus 3 out to the front. So that means everything here, I divide by minus 3. So this one divided by minus 3, it's just x squared. Now this one divided by minus 3, what's that, 13, 14? Positive 14. And this one, when it divides by minus 3, it stays as a fraction, I think. Right? Can you check that on your calculator? Minus 143 divided by minus 3, I think, should still be that. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Then what we do is we just pretend we have this problem. So that would be x plus 7. You see that? Half of this number. Yes? Squared. And then on the side here, or on a calculator, I need to type in 143 over 3 minus 49, uh, which would be minus 147 over 3, is it? Or minus 4 over 3 in total then. Okay. Uh, minus 4 over 3. Now I'm nearly finished. The last thing to do is, what's the verb here? Expand. So now I put the minus 3 back. So I get minus 3 x plus 7 squared plus 4. Okay, I better give you one of these to try and then I'll do it in a moment. So this really is the most difficult type. It's the most difficult because it has an A here, it has minuses, and it has a fraction. Okay, so it's really the most difficult type of example. Okay, can you try for me uh, 3B?
Okay, let's have a look at 3B now. So, for this one we have minus 4x squared plus 48x minus 146. So we take the minus 4 outside, and I have x squared minus 12x. I don't think 4 goes into this, does it? It still stays as a fraction, though. Yeah, It'll be over two. Yeah, over 2. Plus 73 over 2. So far you have the same? Yeah. Yeah. Now, this will be x minus 6 squared, and then on the side I have to do 73 over 2 minus 36. By the way, I should say, in case it wasn't clear, this step here is always minus. Okay? Always. So if there's a plus or a minus here, it doesn't matter. It's always just this number with a minus and a square. Okay? Always. Anyways, uh, that would be... Uh, what would it be? 1, one over 4? One, 1 over 2? Two? 1 over 2. 1 over 2 with a plus or a minus? Plus. Plus, plus 1 over 2. Okay. So this is minus 4 x minus 6 squared uh, minus 2. That's the answer. Okay. Now, let's have a look at why is this useful. So can I scroll down? Yeah. So what we're doing in each case is we're taking our quadratic AX squared plus BX plus C and we're writing it as AX plus B squared plus C. What's the name of this form? This form here? Perfect square. Okay. Now, the reason that it's useful in this form, and um, let's take, take, well, I actually won't put any numbers in. When it's in this form, I can see what is the in this case, the minimum value of y. So if you think about it like this, I want to know what's the smallest value y can be here. Okay, let me highlight stuff here. So I'm allowed to choose any number of x and I want to choose x to make this whole thing here as small as possible. So of course, I don't choose a big x, because if I choose a big x, then what will happen here when I square it? It'd be very big, won't it? Yes. Plus another number, so it'd be very big. And what about if I choose a very small x, and by very small I mean like minus 100? What would happen? Well, minus 100 plus some number, that's still going to be a negative number probably, right? And then if I square it, it becomes positive, it becomes positive and, big. and big again. So there must be some number that makes this whole quadratic here minimum. Zero. Yeah, well, what, not quite zero for x though, or one. What I do is I choose x to equal minus b. What happens if x equals oh. minus b? Yeah. What happens to this piece here? It's zero, zero. It's zero isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Now, this is square, isn't it? So what's the smallest square number you can think of? Well, it's zero. Because can square numbers be negative? No. no. So the smallest I can make this is zero. And when does that happen? When x is minus b. Now, if that's zero, what does y equal? It'll equal C. 
So in other words, the reason we complete the square is it lets us find what is the minimum point, the smallest values. Okay. Now I'll draw a graph to show this in a moment. Um, but if we were to take this one as an example, what would the minimum point here be? Well, it's actually a maximum because the minus, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, let's go back to a positive one. Oh, do you need to write that down? Sorry. My first example, I'll do that again. Y equals, okay, so that is x plus 1 squared plus 7. So in this example, what's the smallest value y can be? 7. 7. And for what value of x will that happen? Minus 1. Minus 1. Okay. Now I'm going to draw that to show you exactly what that means. If it will be minus 7, then this is the maximum value. Yes, yes. We have to look at some graphs for that now, though. Okay, so I'll just graph this so you can see. So minus 1 and 7. Okay. y equals x squared plus 2x plus 8. Oops, wrong way probably. Okay. So the first question, I just made the graph of it. And if you look at the graph, as x gets bigger, y gets bigger. And as x gets smaller, y gets bigger. And you can put the values into the graph to see that even. But you notice that there's some point in the middle here where the y is the lowest it can be. And you can see from the graph that's roughly at about 7, isn't it? Um, but maybe I can stretch this out a bit more just to help. Yeah, see it's roughly here at about 7. And that happens at about minus 1. So this is called, well actually I wonder if anyone knows the vocabulary. This point here, does anyone know the name of it? It has a few names. The same as in the triangle. Very good, yeah. Vertex. Yes, vertex. That's what this point is called. Any other names? Midpoint. Not midpoint? Not midpoint, no. Okay. Vertex? Minimum. Minimum point. Minimum. And there's another word for it. Does anyone know any more? Huh? Turn in point. So by completing the square, we can find the turning point. Okay. Um, but just note, if y equals positive x squared plus dot, 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 the shape is like this. And if y equals minus x squared plus dot, 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 the shape will be like this. So the only difference is your point in the second case represents not the minimum, but maximum, if it was negative. But we still call it the vertex and we still call it the turning point. It just represents something different on the graph. And the reason for that, if you're curious, I'll go back, I'll go back down, don't worry. If A is negative, then this number here, a negative multiply a positive, what's that? Negative. negative. So what's the biggest negative number there is? Well, it's kind of like zero. Okay. That's the biggest you can make it. If this is not zero, then it's a minus. So a minus onto the C means it's getting smaller. So the graph goes down instead of going up because you're taking 
more and more away. You're removing more. Okay? So the minus on the A, instead of adding, it takes away. It removes. Okay? Don't, you don't need to worry too much about that. I'm just trying to explain why the minus answer here makes this shape. Okay? But if you prefer what some students like to do, is they like to put in some numbers, like x equals 1, 2, 3, and then get the y. So if x is 1, we get 8, 9, 11. You know, and when x is 2, uh, what do we get here? 4, uh, 16, isn't it? And so on. So some people like to do their graph like this, but we'll have a different lesson on drawing graphs. Just for today, I only want you to know what the point represents. It represents the vertex also called the turning point. Okay. I'll give you an example to try. So in this one here, uh, will it be a minimum or a maximum point for this one? Minimum. Yeah. Minimum point. And the reason it's minimum is because this is positive. And when it's positive, it makes this shape. So we're looking for the minimum then. They're both called vertex. Okay, so get the minimum point for me now. Okay, we have it. Yeah. So let's have a look. Let's see. So I got y equals 9 um, x squared. Ah, blast. Well, that should have been 162, but you should still get an answer anyways. So y minus 16 over 9x plus 7, 2, 8 over 9. Does that simplify or is it still? No? Okay. So that is 9. Okay. X minus 8 over 9 squared. And then 7, 2, 8 over 9 minus 64 over 81. So I need to do a minus 64 over 81 onto this number. Six four eight eight over eighty one with a plus? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And now finally I need to multiply in the nine. So nine x minus eight over nine squared plus six four eight eight over nine. Okay. So the minimum point here would be, what's the minimum point here? Positive. Very good. Positive? Because remember we changed this sign. If you look back here, if it's B, then we use minus B. So uh, 8 over 9 and 6, 4, 8, 8 over 9. It's the minimum point. Need to tell them something? Yes. That's one of the 
Oh yeah, that's fine. Oh yeah, they have one today. Yeah. They want she wants to. I think she's meeting you after class. Do you know? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to stay for the dentist. Yeah. Well. Um, and what else do I want to say? He said where or when where. Oh, just the teacher's room. The teacher's room. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you'll be able to do it from the laptop? Yep, yep. Yes? Which C? This? How did I get this number? Oh, I multiplied the 9 in now. So I multiplied that by 9, and then I multiplied that by 9. Isn't that right, if you type it in on the calculator? Yeah, of course. Yeah? Yes? I multiplied this by 9, and it makes this. That's all right. Is that okay? Is the complicating thing here, the big numbers? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I have one last example here to do. Yeah, the same. If you have a question, go ahead, it's okay. Sorry, is that a question or? <laughs> oh, right. Do you have a question, Danish? No, All right, okay. Now, um, okay. I would like everybody to type this in on the calculator, their calculator, but I want you to use any value of x. So choose any number for x and type it in. And tell me if your answer is positive or negative. So, for example, if you use x is 0, I can see it's positive, yeah? 414. Positive, yeah. Anyone else? Positive. Positive. So everybody should get positive, right? Yeah. So in fact, or you can put in a negative number for x and it should still be positive. Yeah. Yeah. So in fact, this here, I know, will always be positive for all values of x. Okay, it's always positive for all values of x. And we need to prove that. So you don't really get proof questions in the exam. You get small ones. And the type of proof question you would get in the exam really is this type. So the question would say something like prove or show. It's usually show, actually. It would say show that this is always positive. Always. Well, no surprises for the technique. We use complete the square to do that, okay? So what I do is I say 5x squared minus 90x plus 414 equals 5. x minus 18 squared plus 414 over 5 equals 5. Sorry, that's not 414. Going too fast. Oh, no, it is. Do it, do it, do it. Sorry. Going way too fast. Way too fast. X squared minus 18X plus 414 over 5. Okay. Now I complete the square. So that would be... That is 90 divided by 5 is 18, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. X minus uh, 9 squared. Now, can someone type in 414 minus 81? True, true, true. Okay. It's a half is Satan, it, is isn't it? Is, is it a double? <coughs> Oh, I asked you to type in 414 over 5 minus 81. Is it not this? No, no, no. Oh, thank you. What is it? 9 over 5. Okay. 
Now we multiply by 5. Okay. Now, whoops. Over. Uh, actually, it is. Yeah, should, sorry, it should just be 9. Okay. Now, note, please. Um, this is always positive because, why is this one always positive? Because it's squared. And positive 9 is always positive. That's never going to change. And then positive 5 is always positive. So you're left with this. A positive number multiply a positive number plus a positive number. So that's always going to be positive, no matter what. So you can see, here is it positive or negative? Well, this is positive, right? What about here, positive or negative? Right. The middle piece. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's positive zero. and zero. sometimes it's negative or sometimes it's zero. What would I need x to be so that this is positive? Minus, when will this be positive? Something. When x is negative. Minus. And when will this be negative? Minus. When x is positive. Okay, so this is positive, this is positive or negative, and then this one here? Positive. So I can't see if the total is positive or negative. I can't see from here. It's not clear enough. But I can definitely see here that the total is positive. There's no doubt about that. So completing the square can let you see if your answer will be positive or negative. Now, there's a problem. If you've got something like this, you know you made a mistake. This must be wrong. Because this is always positive and this is always negative. So sometimes it will be positive and sometimes it will be negative, depending on how big this is. So my point is, if you want to show it's always positive, it's only because you get positive, positive, positive. If you didn't get three positives, it means you did something wrong and you have to check your work. Okay. So if the question said show it's always positive, at the end here, you must have three positives. And then you can clearly see it's always positive. Um, I've seen this on the exam three or four times. Okay? And like I said, there's not really any proofs in the exam, uh, on the exam, except for this maybe, and one other topic. Okay? Um, so I'll give you one to try now. Can you actually try 5B? That was 5A. And I'll do 5B again. Now, while you're working on that, I'll just take the attendance here. Yeah? Yeah, I've never seen that asked, but it is possible. So if they wanted you to say prove it's always negative, um, you would need, yeah, you would need this to be minus and this to be minus. And if it was to be positive, you would need this to be positive and this one to be positive. So, yeah, always positive and always negative would look like that. Question J, K, L. Are they always negative? No. Um, I think they're always... Um, oh, yeah. I think they will be. In the question 5, I don't tell you if it's always positive or always negative. I ask you to check. So it does look like in JKL that's always negative, yeah. But I only put that in just to have it in there. I've never seen that one in the exam, always negative. It would be quite unusual, I think. Okay, let's have a look here. Uh, Yusuf? Yes. Yeah, the same. Yeah. Sherry? Sanetta? Yeah. Yeah, Elsie is here. Grace yeah. is here. Anthony is here. Sanit is here. Charles is here. Mohammed Abdel Wahab, and then uh, Tanish is here, Tom's here, Joshua is here, uh, Sultan is not here, Jafar is not here, Olivia is here, 
Don, is here. Adi, yeah. Lisa is here. Aaron is here. Luke is here. Daniel, Daniel, yeah. Is here. Everybody is here. Soon, Donna, Ali. Wait, there's two Ali there. Oh no, sorry, that's Mohammed Al Kahabra. And then Mohammed S. Okay. Let's have a look at that next one. Can you read it out to me? My book closed. What page was it? 24. Okay, so we have 8x squared minus 80x plus 2 of 5. Now, I would like to check if this is always positive or always negative. I think it will be always positive because when I put x is 0, what do I get here? Positive or negative? Positive. So I think I'd like to show that it's always positive. Okay. So I take my 8 out first. x squared minus 10x plus 205 over 8. Uh, that's right, isn't it? Yes. And then I have 8x minus 5 squared. Okay, so I need someone to type in minus 25 onto that number. Positive 5 over 8? Yeah. yeah. Greater than 0. So I get x minus 5. Sorry, when 8 squared plus a 5 is greater than 0. Now please, please, in the exam, to get full marks, you do need to put a little comment. So what you would need to say is something like... Um, 8 is greater than 0, 5 is greater than 0, and x minus 5 squared is greater than 0. Greater so, or equals? Uh, in this case, or equals true, yeah. Positive, positive, positive. Therefore, uh, no, actually, that's enough. So we're finished. When you finish a proof question, what three letters do you put at the end? Oh dear. Okay. Quinn. <laughs> no. <laughs> you said QED. What is that? Yeah. Whenever a whenever a question asks you to show something or prove something and you have finished the proof, then you write those three letters at the end to tell the reader the proof is finished at this point. Okay? So QED just means end of proof. Now I know in some countries, I think in China, maybe in Russia as well, they don't use QED. Instead, I think they put um, no, not a circle, a little black square to mean end of proof. No, we put the abbreviation, but in Russian. Oh, okay, the QED, but the Russian well, equivalent. How do you? Well, it's Latin, so I don't think you can translate it. Uh, I think it's quad or rad demonstratum or something. What does it translate as in Russian? Uh, it's probably something like that which you ask me to prove is proven. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So QED goes at the end of the proof, okay? Now, yeah. well, has anybody used the little black square at the end of a proof? No. no. <laughs> well, I tell you what then. You can make it a white square if you want. Okay. Uh, what is the homework? Yes, let me tell you that. Okay, so can you circle... Less. No, because there's too many negatives in that one. Listen, hey, listen. So in question one, I would like the last tree, BWX. And in number two, I'd like the last tree, XYZ. And I think also in number three, the last three, UBW. Yeah, I think you can do the same for the next one, X, Y, Z. But for the last one, number five, let's see. I'd like... JKA. No, no. GHA. No. <laughs> Yeah, okay. H-I-J. Yeah. Three from each. Wait, wait, just before you go, 
So, uh, oh yeah, thanks.